this is Matt from Vesquant. Today is Wednesday, October 13, 2021. Today is the day of the FOMC minutes release, which will be out at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So I figured we'd take a look at what has happened on the day of the minutes release. Let me go ahead and set this up and discover using all four instruments. The setup's going to be based upon entering the market long at the open of regular trading hours, which is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time and exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Now to describe this day, I'm going to use just a couple um, additional filters. One of them is I'm going to say that we are gapping up. It looks like we're going to have a gap up this morning. We're trading higher in the overnight session. So I've added that to the test by going to the gap direction and clicking on gap up. Next, I'm going to add an indicator here, and usually I'll use two indicators. Yesterday, we closed pretty close to the 10-day moving average, so because we were so close to it, I'm not going to include it. Um, that's just going to get rid of a handful of samples, and um, this is a day that doesn't happen all that often, so I do want to keep as many samples as possible, and with it being a close right near it, I figured we'd get rid of it and not add that variable to it. All right, so I've added above a 200-day simple moving average to it, and I skipped the 10-day that I would normally use there. All right, next I'm going to go into the Market Events Library, and I'm going to click on the FOMC Meeting Minutes. That's from the um, Market Events right here. I can hit equals next to FOMC meeting minutes. That'll add it to the test. Now I can click view results. All right, here we go. These are the results based upon entering the market long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time and exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern time when you gap up on the day of the FOMC meeting minutes and it is above a 200-day simple moving average. Historically, we've got 45 samples here in the S&P, 49 in the NASDAQ, 45 in the Dow, and 40 in the Russell. If we look at the win rates on them, the win rates for the S&P is coming in favored at 64%, the NASDAQ 63%, Dow 58%, and Russell the only one that's under 50% at 48%. So three of the four have a little bit more favored win rates here with the S&P and NASDAQ being the strongest of the group. If we look at the average moves, the average win and average loss are very similar in size uh, for the S&P. For the NASDAQ, the average win has been larger than the average loss. That's also the case for the Russell. Uh, the Dow is similar to the S&P where the average move is about the same in either direction. So um, not a consensus on the average moves, although a couple of them do have larger average wins. And then the win rates on these are mostly favored with the S&P and the NASDAQ being the strongest of the group. So hopefully you found that helpful. Good luck today, and we will see you next time.